today I'm going to show you guys exactly how to set up a DHT22 to an ESP8266. This is a sensor where you can measure temperature and humidity around your boards. And we're going to set it up in this video. If you haven't already, like this video and subscribe down below. It helped me out a ton. Also, there's a secret at the end of the video. Make sure you watch till the end. So, a quick note before we start. I actually have no idea how to set this up. So, we're going to learn today how you set it up with an ESP8266. Uh, I can imagine this is going to take me a while, but for you guys it's probably around, I don't know, 10 minutes. I'm only going to show you the things where I succeed in actually setting this up, but I'll tell you at the end the story about things I learned, things I did wrong, so you don't have to make these mistakes. So. Uh, Let's just get started, I guess. What we are going to start with is actually opening up the sensor. It's a really delicate sensor, as you can see. It says caution because of statics electricity. But we're just going to open it up and be very careful about it. If you have a, a wristband, which you use for setting up PCs, it's probably really handy. I don't have that at the moment, so I'm just using my hands. Big yikes for some people, probably. So this is the sensor. It's really tiny. It's uh, nothing on the back. It's just the front. And this is what reads the temperature and humidity of my rigs. My rig is set up in this PC right there. So it's actually really handy for me to also see the humidity and temperature in my PC. I know you can see it through uh, through the dashboard of the PC, but I felt like this is a, a fun little project to build. So now we've opened the sensor. We have to connect it to one of our ESPs. I'm going to use the bottom one because it's easy accessible. But um, if you have just one, it's really easy. Uh, this is just a part of my rig. These are six. ESP 8266s, as you can see right there. But uh, I've 10 more inside, but I'm just gonna hook it up to one because it's not necessary to actually hook it up to all of them. So what you need is these comparators, the same ones you use to link these together. So I've used them on both sides. We're actually gonna use that on the sensor as well. So we need three for this. I will show you guys a picture of how you can hook it up on screen right now. And I don't want to use two whites, so I'm going to use a different color just for uh, logistics. All right, so what you want to do on the ESP, as you can see on the ESP. Oh, let me frame it. You have a three volt right at the bottom of this. The one above that says G, that means ground. And then we need another one and it's up here called D2, right over there. These are the ones we need. Now it's gonna be a little bit tricky because the three volt is gonna be on the far left side of this board and then the uh, ground one goes to the far right so the ground one over there the second one from the bottom goes to the far right and the d2 on top there goes to the second one from the left and that's basically how we're gonna hook it up so let me just hook them up from the bottom to make sure i don't screw this up um, um, so I already messed up a little bit, well, not messed up, but figured something out. And that is, uh, if you look here at the three volts, you go down my rig, I actually use the three volts. So, uh, since my three volt at the bottom one is used, it's really handy. 
on the other side is another three volts uh, it's right here with the ground above it so we're gonna use this ones at the bottom it doesn't really matter they're both three volts on ground but uh just so you know since i'm already using my three volt i just mentioned right here So now we got the one on D2, as I showed you, D2 is right there. And we have the three volts and the ground. I don't know if you can see that uh, hooked up on this side. Now what you want to do, as I mentioned previously, is link the three volts, in which in my case, it's the black one to the far left side of the sensor. I'm going to hook that up to the far left pin of this sensor. That's one. Then the ground, which is in my case, the white wire goes to the far right side of the sensor. So that's this one. And there we go. And then the D2 goes in the second to last on the left. Right, so what I've noticed is that my white wire is faulty. It doesn't grip, it just slides off. So I'm gonna remove this wire and try it with another one. You do wanna make sure these connections are really tight and secure, that they don't just rip off, because that would be a disaster. It could ruin your board. And since it's brand new for me, I just don't want that to happen at all. So let's just use the blue wire for ground right now. So we hook it into the ground and then we hook it into the ground on the sensor. So there we go. We've now fully hooked up the sensor to the board. And now it's just a coding thing we have to do. So let's dive straight into the code right now. So we are in the code of the ESP8266s. I use the code from DunoCoin. Basically, this code you can apply to everything. You don't have to have a code actually. So the first thing you want to do is you want to add some libraries. If you haven't done that already, just follow these steps. It's really easy. So what you do is you go to Sketch, Include Library, and then uh, Manage uh, Libraries. So once you open the library, you want to search for add a fruit unified sensor and for me all the way at the bottom here's the library i want to install once you've installed that library you want to search for dht sensor library make sure you download the library for esp i made the mistake of downloading it for arduino and since i'm using an esp it's obvious that you have to download the one for esp so there's probably a really weird cut right now because I had a lot of trouble actually setting up this sensor. But thanks to Yusef, thank you so much. He helped me through flashing my ESP. He set it all up. It's, uh, it's amazing this community that they actually help you. But now I can finally explain to you how you can set it up because it's, it's a hassle. It's uh, at least for me, it was a hassle. It might be really easy for you, but uh, I had to overcome a lot of obstacles. But I'm gonna explain to you how you can add this sensor to your ESP. So what you wanna do is connect the sensor to the D2 wire and also to the three volts and the ground on your ESP boards. Once you've done that, you can apply this code, exactly the one right here since i have a dht 22 i had to change the uh, 11 to 22 actually and it's on the pin 4 it's not a d2 pin that's not the name of the pin it's pin 4 so i had to change that actually use have changed it but that's what you want to do so once you've changed all the code you want to upload it to your board like that 
it's going to compile the sketch and then uh, we can check in the serial monitor if it actually works it should show up as the temperature and humidity and i'm going to show you that after this upload so after you've uploaded this code and also connected the sensor after that you should be able to see in your serial monitor the temperature and humidity of the actual sensor in my case i use dunacoin to actually see my humidity and the temperature so if i go to my account on dunacoin here you can see exactly the humidity and the temperature shown from my sensor to the website of dunacoin so that's basically everything to actually make the sensor work so you can run into some obstacles while doing this and the best thing to try then is to just flash your board and see what happens after that make sure you download the right libraries to actually collect all the data and you have the latest version of these libraries also what i found out is that it's better to just unplug every single board you have and just use the one that you have actually put hooked up the sensor to otherwise you might flash different boards which could be damaging to your code and the actual boards so just make sure that you flash the right board and with that you can actually see as of right now that it works also a quick check to see if your sensor actually works is to open the serial monitor and here you can see this line the dht readings and this shows exactly my temperature and humidity percentage so this is a really quick lookout to see if your dht sensor actually works i know it seems a little bit complicated and everything but if you have any troubles after this video just hit me up in the comments or message me on discord and then we'll figure it out i'm sure it's gonna work for everyone that's watching this video and want to add this sensor to his board or her board obviously but that's about everything there is to know about adding a dht sensor to your esp8266 i want to thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video if you're still here for the secret this is my favorite video